too long ago, I made a video talking about Constance's unfortunate husbands. I talked about them, their histories, and their connections to both the story and their wife. However, I skipped one of them. His story was just too big to be tied into that video. So this week, we'll be talking about the fifth and final husband, George. He's arguably the most prominent of the five. That's because he has a greater connection to both the riot's history and to the Disney Parks canon as a whole. It felt wrong to just cram everything about him into that video. So here we are today. Please sit back in your doom buggy as we venture into the boundless realms of the supernatural once more to learn about him together. As we already discussed, the 2006 refurbishment expanded on the bride's backstory, making her an actual character. When constructing it, they were inspired by the stretching portraits, specifically the one of the old woman holding a rose. When you pan down, you see she's sitting on the tombstone of a man named George, presumably her husband. This was one of Mark Davis's original stretching portraits and has been in the mansion since day one. With that strike of inspiration, they decided to make the bride and the widow the same character, telling the story of a black widow bride one that used a hatchet to kill off all of her husbands and gain their inheritance. And to make that connection really clear, they named one of her husbands George, giving him a design that mirrored the one seen in the stretching portrait, allowing for guests to easily draw a connection between the woman in the painting and the bride. Fun fact, all of Constance's husbands were portrayed by Imagineers. George was portrayed by Rick Rothschild, probably best known for his work on attractions like Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. George was an immensely wealthy man from old money, put a pin in it. He eventually met Constance and they were wed in 1877, though that isn't his most important contribution to the story, because he eventually came into ownership of a grand mansion. According to the backstory made by Imagineering, George was one of the owners of the house that eventually became the Haunted Mansion, making him one of the most important characters in the ride's backstory. We never actually encounter George's spirit in the mansion, but his presence is still there. We first see him in the stretching portrait. Starts off innocent, then revealing a murder had occurred. Yeah, pretty easy to make the connection there. We don't see him again until the attic. He's in the very last wedding portrait in the room. He's sitting in a chair while Constance stands next to him, holding a rose, further connecting them to the couple in the stretching portrait. The wedding portrait is surrounded by some of his personal effects, souvenirs from his world travels. Put a pen in it. And the ghost of Constance stands right next to it, looking for her next victim. For such a noteworthy character in the backstory, it's a wonder that we don't get to meet him in the actual ride, only through paintings and photographs. Luckily, in 2009, we did get to meet him. At a dinner event commemorating the ride's 40th anniversary, the ghostess recounted the story of George and Constance's union. She killed him the night before their wedding, making it appear as if he jilted her at the altar. However, they were reunited in death and finally married, welcoming guests into the mansion to celebrate. Is Constance picking favorites? Oh, the drama. You may have noticed that I have only called George by his first name. Why? All of the other husbands had last names, does he not have one? No actually, he does. Remember the first pin about how he was part of a wealthy family? Some of you already know where I'm going with this, but we're gonna explain it anyways. His full name is George Hightower. If we are to assume they take place in the same universe, then George is likely a relative of Harrison Hightower III of Tokyo Disney Sea's Tower of Terror. If you're looking for references in their respective attractions, you won't find any. There aren't any hints of them being connected. You wouldn't even know that George's last name was Hightower unless you read his marriage certificate. There is one piece of evidence, though, that leads me to believe that this is the case. Rewind that second bin. The wedding portrait is surrounded by some of his personal effects, souvenirs from his world travels. Antiquities collector, huh? Kinda reminds me of a certain someone. Let's just hope George got them through more ethical means. Unless that explains his luck in marriage. 
Hmm. The timelines match up too. Hightower was born in 1835. He would have been like 42 when George and Constance were married. George looks like he's in his 40s in his wedding portrait. So it's entirely plausible that they lived at the same time. Plus, they have kind of similar features with the mustache and the hair and the hat. Do keep in mind, none of this is confirmed. There are no sources from Disney saying that this theory is true. But I think it's more than just a coincidence. Tower of Terror opened in 2006, the same year the refurb opened. Maybe there wasn't a coordinated effort to connect the two attractions, but it's not improbable that there was some kind of interaction between the two teams that led to someone slipping in the connection. Whatever you think of the validity of this theory, it's still interesting to ponder. So I hope you can see why George deserved his own video. If I were to include all of this in the last one, it would have made that video unbalanced and disorganized. Better to save something for later rather than try to cram everything into a short time frame. There's still much to learn about him and the rest of the grooms. Time will tell if they expand on their story. But we can't wait for that. So please lean back in your doom buggy and we will proceed in the next video. Thanks for watching.